question that really became my philosophy of life was that who do good get good, who do bad will get bad. When I came here and read the Bible, you can see it in John chapter 3 verse 16, we come up with one word, is in love. And a lot of people doesn't understand, not only me. So you look at it, the world. The Cambodian have a war with the communists. In 1975, the communists have victory over the Cambodian, and they kill Cambodian like the, the animal. They kill all the government officers, they kill all the students, they kill all the rich people because they don't want them to survive or to live because some, they thought that someday they might have a demonstration again to their regime. I lose my father, and my brother, my two sisters were killed. And I myself was close to that because I pretend to be illiterate people, don't know how to write, to read, and I have to work hard and to prove to the communists that I'm a real farmer. When we escape to the West, they go to the Thailand. The United Nations build a refugee camp for them to stay. In the camp, they see every people carry the Bible. When I first in the refugee camp, I got no hope. But uh, after I see uh, one of the uh, Christian Reform Church, and I went there, and especially I, I didn't know what's going on, but I just knew that uh, the uh, Jesus, you know, help people, that's all I know. My parents, like many of the other family members in the CRC, came from Thailand in the refugee camps, and they were sponsored by um, Americans living here in the States. A lot of the founding members of our church were blessed to have those people open their homes and their church and to teach English and give um, support and the families just grew from there. Currently our church now is located in Salt Lake City. That's about a 30 minute commute for us. We feel that 80% of the, the Cambodian people who live in Utah, they live in West Valley. So that's why the people think that if we've been uh, using that facility as the workshop service, the Cambodian church never gonna grow because the, the church is too far from the community. Pastor Charlie started looking towards uh, buildings and land, and then he came across a piece of land that was abandoned for a couple years. And he noticed that it was for sale, so what he thought was like, you know what, my vision is to build a church on this property. Since we didn't have much at the beginning, we wanted to see what we could use off that property, and one of the things was that house. We were hoping to use it either as an office or a place of worship. The work that was put into it, even though it was an old building on an old lot, was tremendous. We put new wires in, we put brand new windows, new shingles, uh, pretty much gutted out the whole house. I mean, most of the congregation, they volunteer, I mean, they put a heart work there, you know, a lot of time. We spent about $20,000. We had stopped for, for a while after we did the remodel because we didn't have the money to continue. And those days we don't have any insurance because they say that we have to remodel that how to be used as a church and then up to that they will sell the insurance to us. Well, hopes of converting a West Valley house into a house of worship are dashed after arsonist strike. It was to become the Cambodian Christian Reform Church. Overnight, a devastating fire ripped through their building in West Valley City. Church members have poured their heart and soul into this building. They say the loss is just devastating. We just pay off the land last month. Pastor Charlie Pym surveys the wreckage in disbelief. Thousands of dollars lost and no insurance. Now, as for the future of this church, the plans are at a standstill. The pastor says he just has no idea what he's going to be doing with this property now. My heart just kneel down and pray because I, I feel like why is that happen but and leave this up to the Lord and say, Lord, this is your house, this is your place. We leave this up to you and pray and please give me the answers on that prayer. All the work that the congregation put into it, just all up in flames. You just couldn't believe it. I just was like, who would want to do this to a place where we're trying to do good out of it? Why they do that? I don't understand why they do that. It was just almost surreal. Couldn't imagine 
who would do such a thing. Three teenagers could be in a lot of trouble. Fire investigators believe they intentionally set fire to a church in West Valley City. I followed one and, and he jumped a fence and went in the backyard and I turned back and found another one and held him there until the police came. The teenagers were later brought into custody and could face charges of arson, criminal mischief and burglary. I think it was one of those nights where they were just looking to have some sort of fun and they decided that you know this was an abandoned home and wanted to see it go up in flames. Some were very disappointed. Some wanted to press charges on the kids. Uh, a lot of them were like, you know what, hey, we're Christians. Uh, let's forgive. God taught us to forgive and with him, you know, we've, you know, gotten over it and we just pray that they will be able to turn from their ways and turn to God and, you know, understand that God has a purpose for them. One of the amazing facts about Northern Utah, the Salt Lake City area, is the only region in the United States and in all of North America that is considered an unreached people group. In missionary terms, an unreached people group is less than 2% of the population. One of the things that's a real encouragement to me is when I see Pastor Charlie pastoring this church, receives no salary whatsoever. He has a presence and, and a really intense story. and. And when you get to know him, it's just an amazing story, how much he cares and gives to the congregation and to people he doesn't even know. He's, I mean, he's been our leader. And that's just, that's it, he's, he's our leader and he's gonna continue to lead. And uh, uh, with the support of the, his congregation, um, he's, gonna, he's gonna lead us there and help us build this church. I always go to pray every Friday morning on the land. And I, I believe that God gonna help me to build a church. I'm like the Moses today because uh, when Moses led the Israel out of Egypt, when he walked toward to the sea, in the front of the Moses of the sea, and behind the Moses was uh, Egyptian. So he's a sandwich between that, but he kneeled down and prayed, and God opened the sea for him to escape from the Egyptian. So I am in the same position right now. In the circumstance, I don't have money, but God gonna give me this authority, God gonna give me the power. That's what I believe that God gonna give me the truth.